Hi everybody, welcome back. Once again, I'm gonna ask you to stop learning and start coding and practicing. And we're gonna use the same example we used in our first coding break. So I want to show you what our old page was right here and see how we can change it into something that looks a little bit more like our new page over here, where we've been implementing some of our margins, paddings, and widths and heights. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I wanna do is use the exact same style sheet I used for the first one. There's absolutely no need to recreate your style sheet when you can either just use this one and amend it, or if you'd like, use two style sheets. I'm gonna use just one. And the first thing I'm going to fix is the fact that I made what you might call a mistake in my earlier version. I have two rules styling H1. That's not a problem. The browser will apply all these styles. But what I really meant to do was I meant to style the body tag. So let's take a look at what it looks like right now. And let's go back to our current version. And there we go. That already looks a little bit better than what we used to have. All right, so now that I'm on a good starting place for when I start, let's talk about the different things we can style in our page, right? One of the first things I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit of margin to my page. If you look, over here, there's not much space between the edge of the page and the actual browser. I want to add just a little bit. You can add a little bit, you can add a lot. In fact, while we code today, I'm going to add a lot, just so you can see the effects. So how do you do that? How do you add that space between the element and its neighbors? You go in, and we're going to add a margin. And like I said, I think I'm going to make it a little bit more pronounced than in the code I showed right there. I'm going to go ahead and make it um, 4%. So when we do this, I'm going to go back to the page. I'm going to reload. And you can see everything's kind of moved in. All right? Margin just adds a little space and makes it more visually appealing to your users. All right? Let's think of some other things that we want to do. Uh, clearly, I probably want to add a little bit of space between my links and the bottom of the text. So this is a little bit different. I'm not saying to separate the elements. I'm saying I need more space between my border and the element itself. So in that case, what we want to use isn't margin. We want to modify the padding. So let's go in and see where we think we would do that. All right. So I need to add padding inside the whole header. So let's go right here, and I'm going to change it to padding. Again, you can pick anything you want. You can use pixels, you can use percents. I'll go ahead, in this case, I'm just gonna put in pixels. And I'm gonna say, please add 15 pixels of space between the border and the bottom. So refresh, oh, make sure I save, and refresh. And you can see, I've added padding all the way around the entire thing. If I really only wanted padding to be on the bottom, I could have said padding bottom, or padding right, or padding left. All right, let's go ahead and style something else. One of the big things I changed is that instead of having one underneath each other, I've changed these so that they're next to each other. So remember, by default, sections are block. They're display block, which means don't let anyone else come next to me. In order to change it so they're next to each other, we can either use inline or inline block. Almost always, when given this choice, you're going to use inline because when you use inline, you can include a height and a width. All right. Go back to my CSS file. Um, I don't want to change the header. I think I'm pretty good with H1, the nav, the H2. Oh, you know what? I don't have anything that I can change here. So let's go ahead and put in a new tag. Section. All right. I want all three of these sections next to each other. So what I could do is I could pick maybe 400 pixels each. Well, that would mean that the browser has to be at least 1,200 pixels. I could pick 150 pixels each. Well, that means they're going to be really skinny even if they don't need to be. So let's use percentages. I'm going to use 30%, not 33, because I want to give a little bit of elbow room for paddings, borders, margins, etc. All right. Let's go ahead and look at it right now. I want to see what it looks like. You can see I've made it 30%, but they're still not next to each other. That's because they're still block. Let's change them to inline block. Display. And let's hope for the best. 
There we go. I've got all three things next to each other. Still not looking exactly the way we want, but it's step by step. It's making this little bit of progress at a time. I'm going to go ahead and fix this fact that they aren't all lined up at the top. And I'm going to say float left refresh. And we're getting closer. We're getting closer, but there's something still a little bit wrong here. First, they're squished. I don't like them all squished together. So how do you separate different elements from each other? How do you add a little bit of space between elements? All right, if we were in class, I'd have that one student who's like, ooh, 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 I know. Yes, it's margin. All right. Margin, I'm only going to put a margin on one side. Let's say margin right. And I will make it something small, like 2%. All right, we're getting closer, we're getting closer. Still not quite what we wanted, but this is how it works. You add a little bit, you adjust, you add a little bit. So the problem, one of the big problems here is that um, when you float things to the left, or if you, when you float things, once you're done floating, when you don't want those next elements to float, you actually have to go in and say, oh, but I don't want to float this part. So once we're done with these three sections, we don't want the footer to also be have them next to them. So let's go in and adjust the footer code down here. If you remember, if you don't want things to float next to you, we're going to use clear both, which means don't let anything float on either side of me. Oh, much better, right? Looks much, much better. And other than the fact that I've got weird colors, we're very close to right here. I actually kind of like the gray on the header and the footer, so I'm going to leave it. But what I do want to do is I want to make that picture smaller. This little icon right here, let's make it look a little bit more like this. And that's very simple for the approach we're going to use right now. Let's go ahead. I'm going to add an image. And I'm going to go ahead and just hard code it right now. So I'm going to make it 75 pixels. Oops, I have to say width 75 pixels. Let's take a look at how we did. You know, that looks OK. If I didn't like it and I wanted to play with it, I wouldn't go in here and try 100 and then 80 and then 52. What I would do is I'd go in here and inspect element again. And I would oh make this much bigger, because otherwise everything looks really crazy. And I would go into the image and I'd say, OK, what does it look like if instead I make it 150 pixels? Does that look better? Or, oops, don't want to do that. Or what if I make it 125 pixels? Do I like that? Pick a value you like, and once you find something that looks good to you, copy that value into the style sheet. Because so, if I refresh it right now, my inspect element values go away. All right, just go in here, fix it, save it, and refresh. All right, so this is great. This is the type of things I want, these are the types of things I want you doing in this class. I want you grabbing an HTML file and saying, Ooh, can I change this around? What can I do to make it different? Clearly, this page we've created right here isn't a finished product. It's not exactly how you'd want it to be out there on the web. So we're going to keep learning new things, and we're going to keep styling things in different ways. And as you keep practicing, your confidence and your ability is really going to grow. And that's what I want. I want your confidence to be very, very high by the end of week four that you can do this. So good luck.